Hello folks and welcome back. This is Kweku. I am a pharmacist. This channel is dedicated to healthcare and pharmacy information. So if this is something you find interesting, don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button. Also, if you find this video useful, do me a favor by hitting the like button and feel free to share the video with anybody you think may find it useful as well. Thank you. Today, I'll be briefly taking a look at the medication Zoloft or Cetraline. We're basically going to be taking a look at how it works or its mechanism of action. Zoloft or Cetraline belongs to a class of medications called Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors or SSRIs. And they may be prescribed for a variety of reasons. Since depression tends to be the number one reason why Zoloft may be prescribed, we are going to take a look at the mechanism of action of Zoloft in reference to its use in the treatment of depression. Now, at a very high level, depression is caused when there is a deficiency of certain chemicals in the brain called neurotransmitters. Typical examples are dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine. Therefore, most antidepressants tackle the issue of depression by enhancing these neurotransmitters, typically by preventing their destruction or degradation. So this is a diagram of what is called a synapse. On top is what we call the presynaptic neuron, which contains serotonin. Serotonin is made from an amino acid called tryptophan. The bottom structure is what is called the postsynaptic neuron and houses the serotonin receptors. Under normal circumstances, serotonin is released from the presynaptic neuron and passes through a channel and binds to the serotonin receptors. The result of this is a series of reactions which ultimately leads to the enhancement of mood or the happiness or the elevation of mood that we feel when we take a Zoloft. This lasts for a relatively short period of time after which the serotonin is released from the receptors and heads back into the presynaptic neuron where part of it is destroyed or, de or degraded by an enzyme called monoamine oxidase or MAO. Part of it is also repackaged to be released at a future date. The question then becomes, what if we could, by some mechanism, prevent the serotonin from going back into the presynaptic neuron and have it stay longer at the postsynaptic neuron? This will obviously result in more serotonin available to interact with the serotonin receptors and thereby prolonging that elevation of mood that occurs. And this is exactly what happens when Zoloft is in the system. It inhibits the transport mechanism that takes the serotonin back into the presynaptic neuron, thereby increasing the concentration of serotonin available to interact with the receptors ultimately resulting in the serotonin binding to the receptors for a longer period of time leading to that happiness or that elevation of mood that is expected when one takes Zoloft or Cetraline. Hence, in essence, Zoloft or Cetraline inhibits the reuptake of serotonin back into the presynaptic neuron and that is where it derives its name from, Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor. Other medications in this class that work along similar principles include Prozac or fluoxetine, Paxil or peroxetine, Lexapro or escitalopram, Celexa or citalopram, and many others. So there you have it folks, a very high level explanation of how Zoloft works. Uh, please feel free to share this video with anybody whom you think may find useful. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well if you haven't already done so for more videos like this. Thank you.